Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's been a long time. Uh, I was on vacation, and I had put a couple videos out for scheduling, and I see you guys like those videos, so that was a good thing. Uh, so we'll keep doing it. We'll keep doing the, uh, hey, so you pulled this guy series, or hey, you fused this guy series, or uh, what are you thinking about this, you know? Is the world coming to an end? Maybe, maybe. Um, but today, we are going to talk about, because I had a request from one of my subscribers, uh, can you please cover Necret the Great? Yes, I can. Uh, Necret the Great is a great, pun intended, I guess, uh, champion. He's a Void Legendary. And really, he is only good at one thing and one really one area of the game, and that is going to be Arena. All forms of Arena. Live Arena, Tag Team, and Classic. Okay? Let's just get into it. Necrit the Great is a defense-based Void Legendary from the Undead Hordes. Uh, he has this aesthetic of a Roman Legionnaire. Uh... And he is a vampire, by the way. If you didn't see, he's got he's got like he's got vampire fangs right here, which is really cool. He's got this uh, like Roman eagle, blood eagle kind of looking thing. I know blood eagles are a Viking thing, uh, but you you understand what I'm saying. The the eyes are glowing on the shield. Um, he's got this uh, pole arm. I mean, again, Ray just knows how to make fucking great looking shit you know what i'm saying um that's why it's so hard to quit him you know what i mean it's like having a crack whore uh for a girlfriend all right they're really pretty and they do a lot of fun stuff but you know they got a lot of bad habits you know i guess i don't know that's the best way i can put it honestly um but let's just get into it uh so let's go over his skills this is a1 as you can see i have not booked out mine's a1 uh which i might need to it's not necessary at all but it does help, okay? He, <laughs> in the game, him and I think it's two other legendaries have the mo like the minimal book requirements uh, to be good, okay? Because as you can see here, he needs four on his A1, he needs one on his A2, one on his A3, and that's it. And then he also has two passives, okay? This guy screams value, okay? So let's look at his A1. Attacks an enemy three times. Each hit has a 20% chance of placing a 50% decrease attack for a turn. This effect cannot be resisted. So he doesn't need accuracy, okay? Um, once you book this out, it makes it a 30% chance for each of the three hits, okay? Pretty cool. His A2, Legion of the Damned, which also, by the way, great names for his abilities, by the way. This one is Tomb Glaive and then Legion of the Damned. Uh, teams up with allies to attack one enemy. Allies under ally protection buffs placed by this champion will join the attack. Allies joining the attack will use their default skills. Grants an extra turn if no enemies are killed during this attack. It's a four-turn cooldown when booked. Okay. His A3, Disturbing Infusion, three-turn cooldown when booked, places block debuffs, ally protection, and strengthen, right? The two big ones here, uh, on an ally for three turns, and then the ally protection buff cannot be removed. Okay, so it's protected. His first passive here, uh, the Unsleeping Aegis. Whenever an ally is attacked while under ally protection buff placed by Necrit the Great, it gives them a shield and the ally equal to 30% of this champion's max HP for two turns. Occurs only if the ally does not already have a shield buff placed on them by this champion, so they can already have one so you can stack it with a shield set. Uh, also decreases the cooldown of this champion's Legion of the Dam skill by two turns if the shield buff is placed. Pretty big deal. And then we have here, Arise My Minions. Again, fucking Italian levels are perfect here, I guess. Uh, I'm, Italians really aren't perfect, don't let me lie to you. Uh, places block debuffs and the big strength, and for three turns on the ally with the lowest max HP at the start of each round, and then also places ally protection on them for six turns. Okay. This here, Stirring Me Infusion, does it for three. But at the beginning of the fight, he puts it on them for six. The one with the lowest max HP, okay? He also has an aura that brings a resistance in all battles by 60. This guy would be almost perfect if this was like one of the big ones, like 80 or 100. I think there's only like two champions with like 100 resistance in areas. And it's like Lydia and somebody else. Anyways. And then I have chosen Life Harvest on him, which I feel is a mistake. And we'll get into that in a minute. Let's go over Masteries. So Necra, as you can imagine, you need him with high resistance. And personally, I would kind of make him a little slow. He's going to be kind of like, he's like the prototype UDK, okay? Um, 
but I like I brought mine down here to Unshakable and then you know lasting gifts to kind of give you like an extra turn on some of his stuff and then lore of steel is great to get um uh extra percentages out of the base stats that you get out of uh out of artifacts okay excuse me I actually think I can push this and like give my necrat even more stone skin but let's get into the sets that you're going to want to put them in First and foremost, the set you're going to want to put him in is Stone Skin. You want at least one turn of Stone Skin, okay? But two turn is preferred, obviously. Three turn, I don't feel is necessary. You really don't need Necrat in a three turn Stone Skin, okay? Hopefully the fight doesn't go that long, but Live Arena matches can take some time. Another set you can put him in, which is highly recommended, is Bolster, okay? You can throw him in a Bolster set. If you guys don't know what bolster is, let's just kind of go down here. Uh, it should be down here a ways. Bolster is one of the pay to win sets. Obviously, you get it from the battle pass. It is that and Slayer, I think, are the only two that people say are worth buying. Righteous is fine. Um, right, it's a good set, but I don't really see a lot of people talking about Righteous because Supersonic exists and nine pieces of Supersonic is the best way to make your fastest champion. Right. That's what I understand. If I'm wrong, leave it in the comments down below. Um, but yeah. So as we're looking here, protected 30% uh, HP ally shield for three turns and then also heals this champion by 10% every turn. Okay. So you put this on champions like Necret, UDK, Pytheon, or Suga the Warcaller. Uh, Meyer Suga is in it right now, but I never use her sadly. I do kind of use her as a spicy pick. Um, when I'm in live arena, as you can see, she has a ton of HP, but she doesn't have enough resistance. Um, but let's get back to Necret. Where my boy at? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Okay. Necret. <clears throat> so those are your two options I'm going to recommend. Now, if you don't have bolster and you don't have stone skin, you're new and early in the game and you're like, Oh, I don't know what to do with this guy. Put him in a shield set. Okay. It can be removed. But it is a layer of defense. So let's go to shield. Where is it? Am I dumb? Yes, I am. Let's have some fun. So shield set is the same as bolster, except two things. It doesn't protect the shield. That's a bummer. So it can be stripped. Also, it doesn't heal the champion by 10% of their max HP each turn. Okay. So that is a bummer. Now stats you're going to want for Necrat. Okay. HP boots, HP chest, H, and I recommend HP percent gloves. And again, I recommend almost no speed on them. Okay. You want this guy to hold on to the stone skin and the bolster set for as long as possible. Okay. So in that way, you want him like UDK. Okay. He is there essentially just as like a beacon or a lightning rod rather like UDK to keep your champions alive. But also when he gets a turn, he gets to like, he gets to throw those champions that he has protected at, uh, at enemies. Okay. It's a good way to get around actually UDK's passive because the ally attack gets around the passive, which is great. Okay. So uh, yeah, again, I recommend doing HP percent chest boots, and then also gloves. As you can see here, I have like a 26%. I have triple roll on a crit damage stone skin glove. I really can't do anything with that. I threw it on Necret, and I still use Necret today. He's in one of my three tag team uh, arena teams, and he is a spicy uh, late pick I usually do for uh, Live Arena. Uh, I haven't been grinding Live Arena lately, but, you know, I've been on vacation, hence the point. As you can see, a lot of his gear, I don't even have it upgraded. Like, I don't have it glyphed. I don't have, I don't have it ascended. We can do so much more with this neck right here today, but... I won't do it here live on stream or live on the video, uh, but he can get more powerful. Again, you want to increase you, you, the main stats you need to focus on are resistance and HP. Okay. Also give him a bit of defense, 3,500 or more. That's the ideal spot. Any more than that, it's negligible because of all like the ignored defense uh, mechanics that are in the game right now. Okay. It's actually a way that arena is going. And I do watch Shinny. If Shinny, if you ever see this video, shout out Shinny, um, go to his channel, subscribe to Shinny. He knows what he's talking about with arena. 
Uh, he's one of the best players uh, for arena in the game, my opinion, but he also has finished in plat a couple times, and he does a ton of live arena. He's, like, pretty high up on gold four. Um, but he also said that, too, to where, you know, HP percentage, or HP is the way to go for defense. Um, like, give him a bit of defense, but with everything that ignores defense nowadays, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, but, yeah, we can we can definitely pump him up over way over i bet you we can give him to like 130,000 hp easy with ascendancies and then me finally glyphing him uh and let's kind of take him for a test spin okay if you haven't read his lore it's i mean it's very it's fun um hey raid come talk to me let's uh let's talk some lore stuff uh i know layla fox has that bitch cornered but whatever well, let's just take him into live arena and i want to show you what he can do okay uh refresh the list i want to find a good team here Man, I heard he, this team's good, okay. Let's use, not this team. So I'll show you the team I have him in. I have Armand's lead, obviously, you're gonna wanna do that. Siffy, Necret, and Rotos. This is generally what you're going to see him used in for Arena, okay. You're gonna have a CC champion, you can probably this duo here, okay. A lot of times you can see him used with Sun Wukong, I've seen him used with Kandrafon. Any attack damage dealer that's going to have low max HP, he is going to be in, okay? So, right here. Position also matters, okay? You want him roughly here or here. Um, depending on... Here's the thing. We'll get into Blessings right now, actually. I'm sorry. Let's, let's get into Blessings. Okay. I did kind of skip over that. Let's go. Ooh, nope. And then, yep. Yeah. He is defense. Okay. Blessings. I'm sorry. Change blessing. Okay. Life harvest is what I chose. I actually want to change that. My recommendation also right now, since we have the new blessings coming out, Raid Plarium is going to let you change your blessings for free. I put a dollar on that. I'll give you a dollar if I'm wrong. Um, because they do that anytime they come out with like new things for a mechanic. They're like, you get a free change. Here you go. Which is nice of them to do. Um, but actually, you want to put him in lightning cage. Can I change this? Yeah, we're going to swap him into lightning cage. Why are we putting him in lightning cage, Ope? Right here. Lightning orb stacks. percent chance to protect a random buff from being stolen, removed, or transferred. So if you don't have five or if you don't have six star blessing on your necret, use lightning cage or use life harvest, whatever you want to do. Lightning cage is my recommendation because it is going to protect the stone skin buff that he has on himself, right? Makes sense, right? Good. Okay. If you have six star blessing on him, you obviously want to go polymorph. Okay. And here's the reason. Necra is going to be high in the team order because if you have a six star blessing on him and he has polymorph on him, He's going to proc the polymorph debuff before the debuffs hit the rest of your team. That's how this works in the game. It's sequential order. So if you so say you have Armand's, Necret, and then you have like Siffy and Rotos, okay? Say they have, who's a good CC champion that everybody hates? Okay, we'll say they have an enemy Armand's. Armand's goes to deplete the turn meter and put stone skin on, or uh, I'm sorry, put stun on people. The polymorph blessing will proc before right it checks it checks the ability before it gets to the rest of your team so it can save your rotos and it can save your siffy and it'll save your ass in a fight okay that's why i recommend polymorph for six star blessing or higher <laughs> six star blessing. or higher six star blessing anything under six star blessing i'm telling you lightning cage or um life harvest okay because Life Harvest gives a turn meter boost. And that's my my big thing. But it doesn't give a turn meter boost until you're three star. So there you go. Lightning Cage. Also gives you a little bit extra damage Lightning Cage does. Life Harvest is also good because it destroys enemy max HP. You know? I mean, it's a win-win. Uh, so let's look at a team here. Let's go against these guys. Uh, again, let's switch those two around. Uh, yeah, let's just go by faction. This is going to be easier. They're in the same faction. Suffering from success, I tell you. Okay. Uh, 
And then this is what I usually do for my Siffy. Her first choice is Loyal Beyond Death in case we get outsped. Um, yeah, there we go. All right. Here it is. I'm thinking we should be faster. We might not be. But we'll see. Okay. Let's take it off auto. Yeah, what's up, bitch? We are faster. <laughs> all right. Siffy does the turn meter boost. She gives increased speed and all these fun buffs. Boom, deplete, everybody gets stunned. Lock the Tarras out, and then we just go to town. Now, as you can see, Rotos had the lowest amount of max HP, which is what you want to aim for. If you can't, if your if your uh, if your team isn't working out that way, you're like, oh, I can't figure out why he's not putting the buffs on my damage dealer. It's because your damage dealer has too much HP, so you need to increase the HP of somebody else on your team to make that threshold higher, or lower the one on your damage dealer. Okay. Um, but with even Rotos is kind of a funny case as well because he deals damage based on his HP and attack. Um, but this is what we'll do. We're going to kill the Reviver first. Pop. And then we're going to go in. We're going to kill the Armands. He is the most terrifying. And then we just do this. We just go to town. Boom. Okay. Necrets up. This is what we do. We're going to ally attack. He lived. <coughs> decrease the turn. Like, decrease the cooldown on that ability because he hit Rotos from a retaliation proc so now this is back to a one turn cooldown and then i'm just going to put this on boom i'm going to put that on my siffy because i need her protected because she's going to revive my team this this fight's already over rotos kills boom rotos is a good counter for Taras, by the way there we are not a great counter but he's pretty okay that's how necret works everybody people are gonna be like alex oh hey does he work anywhere else in the game no He's been tried. When he first came out, it was so confusing. People really didn't know what to do with him. This is a true story. When Neckart came out, they looked at his kit and they go, hmm, is he a clan boss champion? You know, are we able to get him like in reflex and get him in relentless so he can cycle turns and do refresh accessories to put his ally protect buff on the entire team? And then when he uses his ally attack stuff, you can start dealing big damage on the clan boss. No. Deadwood Jedi tried that. It didn't work out. And then everybody went, oh, fuck. we're dumb. We're all dumb. He is definitely an arena champion. I mean, and look at him. He looks like a Roman gladiatorial, like, you know, he won his freedom. You know, he's Maximus. But there you go. This video is running kind of long, 17 minutes. Uh, but there it is. Again, Necret, do not use him for PvE. He is a PvP champion only. He looks hella badass. I mean, let's just fucking look at this guy, huh? Huh? He ain't got no guts. Oh, he's got some intestines just still laying there, but that's all right. I think it'd actually be kind of fun if they took their red eyes and they put them all on the sigils and stuff. That'd be really cool. Uh, but yeah, he is a vampire because of his teeth, and he's in the undead hordes. He is missing his mandible, all right? His bottom jaw, so he's got this golden one put on. It makes him look kind of like a, like a beetle. But yeah, I like Necret a lot. I use him. He's great. Any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Hopefully this helps you out. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.